we are going to discuss the Fae today. It's going to be good. Um, if you have your Bibles, your King James or Message or whatever, we're going to go first reading Colossians 1 verse 16. If I can find it. <laughs> Ephesians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Alrighty. So the this is uh, Colossians one verse sixteen. It was one of the posted mm -hmm. scriptures for today, and it says, "For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him." And I like that the scripture specifically says visible and invisible because there are that there are plenty of fae that like to be invisible. And I, I do believe that fae can hop between the realms and can hop between the veil, so to speak, the dimension. I'm a very multiverse theorist. Um, and this is a perfect scripture that just shows that like, even if we can't see it, God has created it. And, um, because God has created it, it was by him and for him. We should not be afraid of it. Um, and we'll go into a little bit more of that and what, why the Christian community fears faith so much. But that's, um, that's the scripture I wanted to read. And also Ephesians 1 verses 21. That is once again Ephesians 1 verse 21. For far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only into this world, but also in that which is to come. Um, and uh, this is talking about Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ is being um, set at his own right hand, the right hand of God in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion. Um, in other scripture uh, it, sorry, in other translations of the Bible, I might say virtue. And virtue is the word we're going to focus on. Um, and it's talking about how Christ is seated above all that. And he, we are seated with him there as well. And so not only does he have power over the Fae and other spiritual beings, but so do we. So um, as we studied with Harry last Saturday, if you weren't able to catch it, it's still up on Facebook. And uh, if you want, we are actually working on uploading it soon to YouTube. Mm -hmm. We're going to make a YouTube channel and I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but as Harry had described last Saturday, the Fae are what we consider virtues of the elements. Okay, and um, that is where they sit on the celestial celestial the celestial, the celestial hierarchy. So they are what we describe as virtues or elements because Fey work very well with the elements. And we're going to dive in on what they look like as well in regards to that. But first, I want to talk a little bit about why Christianity has this fear or this bitterness towards the Fey. Um, first of all, Christianity as a whole tells us that Fey are demons, um, most likely because of tradition and patriarchy. Okay. And the thing is, Fae, when you start getting to know them, do not play by our rules. They do not play by our societal standards. And they do not like um, being controlled or seeing people being controlled. And uh, <laughs> I think that's a main reason why the Fae don't like Christians. They don't like religious people in general. They like spiritual people. They don't like religious people. Um, one quote I found talks about how they were delusions sent by the devil or devils in disguise to send us astray. Has anyone ever heard that before? I know I have when it talked about fairies, little devils trying to trick Christians or trying to ch trick children, which is it's a horrid thing to think about. Like why? Anyway. Yeah. So that's what we're, we've been told. Um, also I found some stories on the internet on people that were given exorcisms because they went and visited the fairy realm or because fairies came to them and, oh, that must mean you have demons now, right? <laughs> I mean, in and of itself, we've talked about how demon, the word demon is not evil. It's just associated with evil because of Christianity. But anyways, I digress. Um, 
because elements and virtues are God's creation, they are for him, and they are in the hierarchy of angels, as we've discussed. Um, another focus on somebody that didn't really like <laughs> the Fae, or was being kind of Christian-wise about the Fae, is Reginald Scott. In his book, The Discovery of Witchcraft, it says, God made the fairies, bugs, incubus, Robin Goodfellow, and other familiar domestical spirits with demons. So they flee the Sabbath. He claims the Sabbath is Sunday, but anyways. They flee the Sabbath until it's safe to stir trouble and molest men. That was the actual quote. And I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyways, could not be far from the truth. Um, and... Also, I just want to mention, too, I found some information on BritishFairies.wordpress.com. This is where I found some, some of these quotes. And then, of course, there's the Cornwall beliefs. The Cornwall church believed that um, they were not demons, but they were actually not angels either. They were souls of stillborns who weren't baptized and died without being baptized. And that's why they were stuck here as fae. I still believe they are part of the celestial hierarchy, as we've already talked about. Um, Doreen Virtue, I don't know if anybody is familiar with her, she's kind of an outcast in the witchcraft community now because she was a Christian, became a witch, and then went back to Christianity and kind of gave away all her rights and everything. Like she started this Hay House Publishing, she started a bunch of stuff and gave that all up because she felt like God told her to. That being said, when she was a Christian witch, she said that the Fae were God's creatures with important missions. They were angels who reside close to earth, helpers to humans, and guardians of nature. So um, if they are specifically angels that were sent here to help us and to do God's bidding, where's the free will in that? How does that work? Because Fae, if you know them, definitely play by their own rules. And they definitely don't listen to any sort of obedience or and I mean, they don't have any sort of obedience, but they don't listen to any sort of command you give them. So how does that come into play? Some are nice enough to do, as you ask, you know, like brownies and gnomes and, you know, creatures like that that are specifically known to live around the house. Um, but some definitely don't, like Kelpies and Bogarts, when you make a brownie really angry, you know, they get angry and attack, right? Faye can be very cruel, but... In my opinion, and so far from what I've read and in my research, only to those who do them wrong. And that's why I think they don't like Christians. <laughs> because, uh, oh, my baby's crying. I'll be right back. Let me get the little preacher man. Preacher man's tired. Daddy's gonna be home soon, but anyways. Um, and yeah, I think that the Fae play by their own rules, and I mean, I some could be fallen as well. Some could say, you know what, I don't want to have to play the role that I've been meant to play. But uh, for the most part, Fae are very. They can be pretty kind. So long as you know how to act around them and you have to understand you can't force them into what you think they are. They are very much their own creatures and very much have their own way of living. Okay. And we're going to talk about that as well. Um, so some good people you can look into that do discuss the, the roles um, through Christian witchcraft for the Fae include Reverend Flower a new house. I thought that was a pretty cool name. And uh, also, I think it's Manly T. Hall, okay? And Iris Ratsy also claims that um, the Fae give her a sense of divine presence. And I believe that, too. I definitely feel divine presence when they're around. Um, also, uh, we have found Fae in the Bible. And, of course, it's not talked about, but they're there. And I'm going to show these scriptures to you. <laughs> Where are you going?
Where are you going? What? Really? Oh, you tired? Yeah. So I want you to read Psalms 106, 37. Okay? That's Psalms 106, verse 37. And I'll, I didn't post these, but the scriptures, but I can if anyone needs me to. You gonna help me read it? You gonna help me read the scripture? So that's Psalm 106, verse 37. So, oh, interesting. Okay, so this scripture says, Yea, they sacrifice their sons and their daughters unto devils. But if you look at that word devil, it's not the word devil at all. It's shadu, which is benevolent or protective spirit. And the shadu were described to be wild, wild human-like creatures. Um, and another little, so this is like um, talking about changelings. This is talking about um, when the fae, you know, you always hear those stories of the fae asking for your firstborn and they'll do something for you. This is what the, it's actually talking about in 106 verse 37. It's talking about those fae that require those children from those people because of the, it's just given an example of people that have walked away from God and are leaning on things they shouldn't. Not that we shouldn't work with the fae, but we should be careful how we work with the fae, okay? Um, another scripture is Deuteronomy 32, verse 17, okay? Deuteronomy 32, verse 17. And this, once again, uses the word devils, but we're going to talk about the actual word. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that newly came up, whom your fathers feared not. And this is Moses talking, or, or the song of Moses. But if you look at that scripture, the word devil in Hebrew is shedu, which is benevolent or protective spirit. Or sorry, no, sorry, I read that already. Sirim, or um, shehirim is another term for it, which is means hairy being. And if you look at it more closely in Kabbalah, it's talking about satyrs or centaurs, okay? Wild men who would dance. And they are mentioned again in Leviticus 17, 7. We'll flip there real quick. Leviticus 17, 7. Uh, oh, nope, oh, that's numbers. <laughs> I'm like, that's not making sense to me. Okay, hang on. Mothers, you learn how to do a lot of things one-handed. There we go. 17 verse 7. Everyone's quiet in the chat today. <laughs> I'm not seeing any comments unless maybe I'm just... I don't know. Anyways, um, I'll have to check on my phone in a bit here, see if I'm missing any. Okay. And they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils, after whom they have gone a-whoring. This shall be a statute forever unto them throughout their generations. And so it's just talking about offering sacrifices only to God, not to um, these creatures. And this specific um, devil word, once again, it's mistranslated. It's more related to satyrs or centaurs. Um, they're also mentioned in Isaiah. We've got two more scriptures. Isaiah 13, 21. And this is the same root word for um, Shehiram. Okay. Isaiah 13, verse uh, 21. Yes, I know, honey. But wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satyrs shall dance there. My scripture actually says satyrs shall dance there. Um, so it's talking about um, when Babylon has been dis uh destroyed the satyrs the fae will take over they because the humans won't be in that land anymore and isaiah 34 14 where are you going so yeah it's talking about wild men who dance satyrs centaurs um 34 14 
The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow, the screech owl shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. So it talks about fae that dance in the wild, okay? So the Bible does actually mention these guys, and that's something that Christians don't want to talk about. Another word is mazikin, um, which closely um, lines up with the Arabian word jinn, okay? which is considered to be fake. Um, so there's also some theories surrounding Adam and Eve being the ones that bore these creatures, um, because according to the Talmud, there were 130 years that Adam and Eve were separate. So it could be that these creatures were created during that time by Adam or Eve mating with somebody else, um, or something else. But... Um, from what we discovered on Saturday, once again, if you haven't seen that, I definitely recommend you do. The Fae are angels. They're celestial hierarchy, okay? So if so, we, now we know they do exist. Now we know that the Bible does talk about them and that they're not evil. It's our intention, right? Our intention with working with them that can be evil. How do we work with Fae, okay? And should we be afraid of them? Well, I can answer both of those questions by saying this. Use caution, but do not be afraid, okay? Witches are known to have a natural relationship with the Fae. And the Fae are normally naturally attracted to them, okay? And another scripture that talks about this, sorry, I forgot I had this one, is Romans 8, verse 19. And this is one of my favorite scriptures. That's why I put it in. And it talks about, for the earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. And once again, it, another uh, version says, um, all creation waits in yearning for the sons of God to be revealed. They're waiting for us to step into our, our livelihood, our kings and priesthood. They're wanting us to step up and be the Christian witches we are meant to be. And that's animals, that's creatures, that's fae, that's everybody that lives here on the earth with us or on the, you know, within the verse with us. Um, that's once again, Romans eight nineteen, And I won't um, go through these, but Genesis 1 verse 28, that's a big one that talks about our dominion over them. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 3, another really good um reasoning that we have power over them once again that's genesis 1 verse 28 and 1 corinthians 6 verse 3 we have power over the faith through christ and we do not need to fear them but we just need to be cautious okay so i'm going to give you let's see how many steps did i write here six steps on what to do if you want to work with the faith okay so write this stuff down how to work with the Fae. Step one, okay? Decide how you want to work with them and set boundaries. Once again, that's decide how you want to work with them and set boundaries. So first of all, where are they allowed to be? Do you want them in your house? Sometimes that's a big line for people. They don't want them in the house because they can, they can cause some ruckus in the house, okay? It's like spirits in the house, you know? You don't want certain guides in the house. Um, do you want them in your garden? Do you want them on your land at all? Would you rather go meet them in a forest or by the pond? Make those boundaries before you even talk to them, okay? Set these first. Where are they allowed? Where are they not allowed? Are they allowed to speak to your children? Or are they only allowed to speak to you? Make that clear with them, okay? But first of all, make that clear with yourself. Um, they are like children in the way that they are mischievous and they will push your boundaries. They will try to take advantage of you. You tell your kid that he can buy one thing from the store. When you told him before he wasn't allowed to have ice cream, well, he's going to go to the store and he's going to buy ice cream, right? Yeah. Is that what you're going to do? Yeah. He loves ice cream. So they like loopholes. They like to push your boundaries. They are much like children. You have to set those specific boundaries for them so that they know how to act around you, okay? So that's number one. Decide how you want to work with them and set your boundaries. Um, number two, 
provide a safe space for them to dwell, okay? Provide a safe space for them to dwell. Um, this can be in your house or it can be in the forest. You can have a little corner where you set up some things for them. Um, not sacrifices, but, you know, gifts, gifts for them, okay? Um, they can, you can set them up in the garden. A lot of people do that. A lot of people like their gnomes that help out in the garden because they attract um, bees, butterflies, that kind of stuff. They help fight the pests. They, you know, they help uh, make critters run away, you know, bunnies, that kind of stuff that might get into your garden. Um, provide them a safe space. I personally have a space up in my attic. I don't actually go up there very much, so I should probably move it, but they have a little shelf and I put a little fairy house there. I put some little fairy things so they know that they're allowed there. I bought some little miniature dollhouse pieces because they do like furniture. They And I actually had some fae that I even painted furniture for and they loved it. They were so happy. And I gave them a little jar. You make sure you give them water. They also like treats, candy. Um, if you have any fresh baking, they love that. They love champagne, rum, that kind of stuff. Just a little bit. Make sure they have fresh water though. Um, and of course, any gifts. They love shiny things. They love knickknacks. They love crystals. I actually had a fae <laughs> that I had given her some crystals that I wanted her to have. And she, and I was thinking, there was this one kyanite that I was like, oh, maybe I should give this to her. And I'm like, eh, I don't know. I'll probably keep it. Well, she went into my crystals and I found that crystal in the pocket of all the stuff that I had given her. She went in and stole it because she knew I was trying to decide if I was going to give it to her or not. So funny. Um, but anyways, give them some little trinkets and stuff. They love that. Um, so number three, tell them in your way that you're willing to work with them, either out loud, which is what I did, or in a letter or whatever way works for you in music, however you like to communicate, um, and tell them your boundaries that you have set and you've already decided, okay? So they don't have a say in your boundaries. You just tell them, this is where I'm at, this is what I'm willing to do, this is what I'm not willing to do, okay? So number three, that was tell them in your way you're willing to work with them and set your boundaries. Number four, keep a watchful eye and a watchful ear. They can cross the veil when they wish, so they can hop in and out. Sometimes you'll see something and then it'll go away real quick. That's because they're hopping in and out and they're just not quite sure of you yet. But it, it'll come, it'll come, okay? Um, they love to hang out in your periphery, so then like they'll tease you and maybe peek around some furniture and you'll turn to look and they're not there anymore, right? You'll start to hear maybe little giggles or the sound of a ringing bell, kind of like Tinkerbell. <laughs> Um, you might see some lights or orbs. You might see glitter in the air. These are all signs of the Fae. And it's so funny because I had, um, when I started like working with the Fae and I would talk about them with my one friend that was a very new Christian witch, she thought I was crazy. <laughs> she didn't think that Fae existed. So one time we went out for a hike with my dog Kahira, me, her, and her son. And we were walking by a little brook and sure enough, all the Fae were dancing. There were beautiful pieces of glitter in the air and just hovering. You know, they weren't moving around. They weren't falling to the ground. They were just hovering. And uh, the little boy, he was like three, he's like, Mommy, look. And she goes, what is that? And I'm like, that's the Fae. Do you believe me now? And she's like, oh my God, yeah, I have to. I have to believe you. I can see it. Um, and my husband did not believe in the Fae until we moved to Alberta. And he saw them at our new apartment and he came to me and he said, um, yeah, because we, we live in the middle of nowhere. Like we have a lot of wildlife around us. Um, we see moose all the time, elk all the time, that kind of stuff. And he said, yeah, I, I, I see them now. I know what you're talking about. And I was like, see, I told you. <laughs> Maybe we're all getting cabin fever. I don't know. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, keep your eyes out, um, eyes open and your ears open. You'll start to see actual shapes eventually. You'll hear little rings. Um, you'll possibly see some flowers being dropped around or petals. You'll see some things go missing. They love to steal your keys and they watch and laugh as you look for them. And you'll start to see some new things pop up. For example, Lena, I was talking to her on her podcast and she mentioned that they popped a pine cone in her mailbox in a post office box where she has to go to a public space to get it. There was a pine cone in there. So like, what? <laughs> they, that was definitely the thing, okay? Oh yeah? Who's that? That's you. 
Anyway. Um, so keep your eyes out. They will communicate to you in the way they know how to communicate to you. They might leave some feathers, some coins, whatever. Every phase is different. They act different. And learning about them and studying them, when you actually start to re recognize them and you can start to see their shape, um, some of them also shape shift or they'll um, change their size. Once you're able to see these things, you will, number five, be able to identify what type of fae you see. Number five, identify what type of fae you see. So once again, we know that they're associated with the elements. So I want to talk about some examples of how they associate with the elements, okay? Daddy is late for work, from work. I don't know where he is, but anyway, so earth, of course, they're very well associated with the element earth. Um, some earth examples of fae include giants, which are, um, you don't usually see. Um, they're pretty quiet and they sleep quite a lot, but every now and then you might see something stir. Um, they could be laying down next to mountains, that kind of thing. Uh, gnomes, that's also a good example. I actually, really, really. I actually have a gnome living here. I don't know his name, but uh, Weston calls him huh, huh. Every time he sees him, he goes huh, huh. And, uh, or hope, no, no, sorry, hope. Like, almost like hope. Um, he's a really cute little guy. Um, he lived with us at the other apartment. He came in one night, it was very cold, minus 40 Fahrenheit. And uh, he was very chilly and I said, you are welcome here, I have honey for you, I have water for you. You can stay to stay warm if you want. You can even stay longer. I told him we were moving, so he was welcome to follow us. Sure enough, he did. I started seeing him peer around boxes, and um, I think he was also checking in on the baby because I was just about to give birth. Uh, he's a really sweet guy, and I haven't talked to him a whole lot. He's pretty quiet, but he muddles around, and he does his thing. Um, also, a good example of brownies or bogarts. So the brownie does turn into a bogart when you make it angry, but otherwise a brownie will serve your house, will clean, and will do things like that. Um, a troll is a good example. Dryads, which us druids work with a lot. Um, dryads are tree spirits, and uh, they are spirits and fae that associate with a certain specific tree. I have a few dryads in my yard. You can actually talk with them and meditate with them, and they are the sweetest. Uh, every dryad I've ever met has been so kind and so nurturing. Um, leprechauns, they are also real. Goblins, dwarves, halflings, stuff like that. Um, water element, uh, fae, include the Kelpie, which is like a water horse, kind of like frozen, but a little more scary because it, it's associated with a lot of scary things because it would, um, it would like take seals and stuff from the shore and eat them or deer, that kind of stuff. Uh, mer people, okay. Sea ghosts are alvin. Um, these alvin are Dutch, or no, they're from Denmark, and they have no wings, but they're encased in a little bubble, so they float in a little bubble. There's ashrays or asray, asray, uh, asray. Um, there's ballybogs. There's banshees. Um, there's gwegeth arun or gwilians, which are also um, water fey. And of course, there's winter fey, ice fey, which I've seen. Um, they're very pointy looking. They have kind of long finger tendril things, but it's ice, right? And there's selkies as well, which are um, these fey creatures that can shapeshift from a human form to a seal form. And some air examples include Will o' the Wisp uh, from, you know, from Brave or some other uh, movies, Sylphs. There's wind knots or Folletti in Italy. There's the Guris. There's the Skosra, which is a Scandinavian, and it's um, fae that are associated with whirlwinds. They cause whirlwinds and storms. There's the Le the Leo Selfar, the Vila, and the Heiter sprites. And those the Heiter sprites actually take the form of birds. Uh, the fire element just has a few. Hi, John. Do you want to take the baby while I finish up Bible study? Thank you. So uh, fire elements include um, fire salamanders, uh, or Vulcans is another term for them. And they are little l lizard like creatures that live in the fire. Uh, drakes is also another version of the fae. And these are very small cousins to dragons. So you'll see them in caves and caverns, underground, that sort of thing. And of course, fire fairies. They are the hopping fire girls that hop in the flames of the fire. Um, 
Also, there's the um, the Shedim, which we mentioned earlier, or the Shedim, uh, or Shedim. They are also fire elemental. Uh, and also some Fae that over-encompass a lot of different elements include Spriggans. You can see Water Spriggans, Air Spriggans, Earth Spriggans, Elves, Pixies, Fairy Quartz. There are actual Quartz and Royal Nobility that they have a whole system, a whole government that they use. Um, and there's Devas or Divas, which are the orbs. You'll see the orb colors. Those are Fae, uh, depending on the color. And of course, nymphs. Nymphs are known to be within the different elements. And there are also hearth or homestead fae, which we've discussed before. Um, brownies, gnomes, those dwarves, those kind of things that specifically stay around the home and like to work in the home uh, because the home is a very magical place. Um, and once again, these are just a few examples. There are so many more in cultures and so many more. If you can actually find like a fairy Bible, um, mm -hmm. such a good book that my friend lent to me once. And it talks about all the different hearth fairies and all, all the different fairies in general and fae. They don't all have wings. They're not all Tinkerbell looking. They are, they can be quite scary, but simply because we just don't understand them and they're different, right? So I've talked a little bit about how to identify them. Now I'm going to tell you what not to do. Number six, what not to do with the Fae, okay? Never say thank you, ever, because Fae are very transactional creatures. You give them this, they give you that. You give them this, they give you that. If you say the word thank you, they think that you're taking that as a gift, which means you're not willing to give something back. So they think, oh, so I gave you this, you say thank you, and that means I'm not getting anything in return? You're going to piss them off, okay? Don't say thank you. You can say, I appreciate your act of fellowship, if you'd like to say something along that line, but do not say the words thank you, okay? Also, do not have any negative energy in your home. They don't like negative energy. They will not show up. They will pack up and leave. No negative energy. Make sure your house is cleansed. Make sure you aren't fighting. Make sure there's no violence or anger or anything like that stewing in the household. They will not stay. So also this means don't have a messy house or clutter. If you want Faye to come around, they don't like that. Because clutter in the home shows clutter in the soul. And they do not like working in a messy house. They will help if they're hearth fairies. They will try to help you with the messy house sometimes. But for the most part, if you're trying to attract Fae, do not have mess or clutter. It's messy. They don't enjoy it. Um, they understand if you're moving and that kind of thing. But when it comes to just living in stagnant energy, that's where the messy clutter, clutter that's what it causes. That messiness, clutteriness, it causes stagnant energy and chaotic energy. And they don't like that. Um, another thing you should not do is do not forget to give them fresh baking you have made. If you make any fresh baking or any sweets, anything like that, you decide to make donuts one day or cornbread or whatever, do not forget to give them a piece because they will be very upset because it'll show that you didn't think of them. Um, even though you're developing fellowship with them, you didn't think of them when you were making something. Because, you know, when you make something nice, you go, oh, I want to make sure I save some pieces for my husband. Oh, I want to make sure I save some for my friends. Save some for the Fae as well. Even if it's just some crumbs, they will be upset if you do not. Okay? Another thing is do not provide them clothing unless they specifically ask. Because if you provide them with clothing, you're saying what they're wearing and what they look like is not good enough. They don't like that. And that's once again why I think a lot of Christians and, you know, past traditions don't like them because a lot of times they're naked. <laughs> so if you're giving them clothes, you're telling them they're not good the way they are. Um, so do not provide them with clothing unless they ask. Usually they don't. Most of the time. I've never had Faye ask me for clothing ever. Furniture, sure. Clothing, no. Um, also, uh, do not put out herbs or crystals that they do not like. Okay, there are some crystals out there they do not like. And for the most part, they're very specific, obscure crystal crystals you probably don't own. But a lot of the normal ones include hematite, pyrite, black tourmaline, or peridot. So if you are providing them a uh, little offering, you're providing them little gifts, do not include hematite, pyrite, black tourmaline, or peridot. They do not like those 
those crystals. They also do not like St. John's wort, the herb, or yarrow, okay? You wanna give them rose petals, you wanna give them flowers, they love that, they love honey, they love wheat, they love grains. Do not give them St. John's wort or yarrow, or hematite, pyrite, black tourmaline, or peridot. And once again, do not offer nothing in return. If they provide you with a gift, um, for example, my uh, Faye once gave me a tip on someone that was trying to curse me, um, and they helped me fight that curse, you have, I made sure they knew I wanted to give them something in return. Once again, they're very transactional spirits. They want to know you've got their back when they have your back, okay? So do not offer them nothing in return when they do give you gifts or they give you help or they tell you and warn you about something happening. Um, so once again, I'll just repeat all those. Decide how you want to work with them. Set boundaries, number one. Provide a safe space for them to dwell with some food, treats, that kind of thing, gifts. Tell them in your way that you're willing to work with them and your boundaries, okay? Uh, you're willing to, sorry, you have to tell them your boundaries. Um, four, keep a watchful eye and ear. Five, identify what type of fae you see. If you need help with this, just message me. I'm so happy to help you with that. And number six, know what not to do, okay? So now I'm just gonna spend some time and as we close, and I'm gonna talk about some personal experiences that I've had with the Fae. And if you have any questions, please drop them below. I still am not seeing very much comments, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna check here on my Facebook and make sure I'm just not missing them because I could very well be missing them. Uh, yeah, there's 21 comments. Okay, thanks Facebook. Sorry guys. Okay, um, oh, hello, Alex, hope you're having a good night. Friend of mine from middle school could see Faye, yep. Yeah, and some people have natural giftings for it, you know, um, especially children. Do types of Faye vary depending on your area? Absolutely. Uh, what about pixies? What about them? Are you asking about uh, how they work? The no eg negative energy part is difficult with my mom. Yeah, um, that being said, they will start coming around you and will just disappear when the mom shows up, if that makes any sense. I'm trying to scroll here. Facebook is being so difficult. Um, let's see here. It won't let me scroll past those. Shoot. Um, if you have any questions, maybe for now, just send it to me personally. For some reason, it's just not letting me see it. Um, which is super frustrating, but um, let me see if I can get this to work. Come on. Hmm. That's annoying. Swipe left to reveal comments. I am. I'm swiping left and they're just not coming up. Anyways, yeah, just send me a quick DM then if you can regarding your question and I'll try to answer them here. But anyways, let's talk about some personal experiences. So my very first encounter with the Fae, like with them in my home, I was actually in university and I was living at a dorm and um, I was, it was at a time when my husband and I were separated. We were just spending some time apart and um, I had the ability to um, spend some time, you know, doing things like that, working with the Fae and on my free time. Um, so I started, um, speaking out loud in my room and I would say, okay, um, hey there, I recognize that you're there, even though I cannot see you, I would be interested in working with you. Um, I am new to this and I am willing to learn, but I am interested in a flat fellowship with you and will provide you space in my home. Should you like to live here? So I provided a little, I think it was the bottom shelf of my bookshelf. And I set up, like, once again, I set up some, um, little, at first it was just a little bottle or a little, um, little bowl, like almost like a, a candle, um, just like, I'm going to shut the door. John, that's too loud, honey. I can't shut the door because of the closet doors here. Um, so yeah, I, um, I just set up a, a, like one of those little tea light holders and I just filled it with water every day. And sometimes I miss, but most of the time I tried to make sure I was keeping it full. Um, and um, 
I set out some little treats, some nuts. They love nuts. They love um, they love berries. They love sweets. Jolly Ranchers were my my specific phase favorite. So I would buy them some candies. And sure enough, I started to hear little giggles and little little bell rings when I was just chilling in my dorm. And I knew it wasn't through the walls because it was so quiet and so faint. And I'm like, wow, this is really weird. And then sure enough, I started seeing them in my periphery. And eventually, I started to see actual shapes and actual colors. So I saw, once again, the Winter Ice Fairy. Um, I don't think he was willing to stay, but he was just making himself known to me. He actually appeared in the frost at my window. You could actually see the face. I think I took a picture of it. And like you could see the face and his hands looking into the window. It was so cool. And um, then the one specific fae was a violet fairy. And um, violet fairies specifically attach their lives or they're born with the flower. So long as the flower is taken care of and growing, then the fairy will appear. So of course this fairy it came on a little bit later, um, of course, because the flowers, you know, when spring came, the violet fairy came. And then there was a hearth fairy that also came. She did not have wings. I can't remember. There's a specific name for her, but she was dressed like a Roman. And that's why it's called this specific name. I can't remember what it's called. I'll have to look it up. But anyway, um, also fairies will not tell you their name. They will give you a name to call them or they'll tell you to give them the name, but they will not give you their true name because if they have their true, if you have their true name, you have power over them. I mean, you do anyway, but anyways. Um, so the one violet fairy was brown hair, long brown hair, um, kind of light purpley pink wings and shaped kind of like a butterfly and a purple, pretty plain dress that only went to her knees. And that was, that was it. She wasn't wearing anything else. Um, and she liked to be called Morgan because she considered herself very powerful and strong. She was a violet fairy. And um, the other one night, like she was wearing a green long dress with like the little um, pieces of rope and or tassels. And she had her hair done up with a little braid and a bun. And she liked being called Dee Dee because of like Aphrodite or Aphrodite. She was a very loving, homely, not homely, but a very loving, nurturing person. And um, they were pretty playful and mischievous. They would make things go missing. I had a cat that I snuck into my dorm room and uh, she, they would play with, I would watch them play with the cat and uh, Tut would chase them all around the room. And this was my familiar at the time. Um, and, uh, they would, you know, just come around and peek and wonder what I'm doing when I was studying or when I was trying to do rituals, they would peer around and, um, I would give them little treats here and there and they would, I can't remember exactly, but I found like little rocks and little pieces like that. Or sometimes they will help you find things that you've been missing. They will hide things, but they'll also like put them, you know, where they weren't before or where you definitely looked. That's like that moment when you looking for something and you've checked everywhere and then you go into your bedroom and it's on your bed and you're like, I know I checked there. That's a fae. Um, and uh, they uh, they would help me find some things that I did lose. Um, but they love taking my keys all the time and pens. They love taking my pens. Um, but yeah, the one particular time in regards to the Faye warning me about um, that guy is I actually had a really, I had a bit of a relationship, which my husband was aware of when we were separated. And um, he was learning the arcane arts. He was learning witchcraft. And uh, he was attempting to curse me, this particular guy, not my husband. And I started, I woke up in the night and I started feeling really, really sick and I didn't have any glasses on, but I saw, D um, I heard Dee Dee cause Dee Dee a lot of the times would just giggle and just peek around furniture. She didn't really come close. Morgan made her presence known always. And she would fly and I, I actually saw her fly around and she landed right by my ear and was sitting on my pillow talking to me. And she said, yeah, it's the so-and-so guy. He's, he's made you feel like this. And I said, well, what should I do? And she said, we'll help you. She said, he's not, and she laughed and she said, he's not very good at these things. He's very, he's not very good in magic. Um, and I said, well, yeah, he's very new. And she said, no, just in general. <laughs> She's just kind of making fun of him. And um, 
she said that uh, she would help me. She's like, don't worry. Um, she, I'll help you fight this curse. Me and Dee Dee will help you fight this curse. And she said it was more of a hex, really, because he just had no clue what he was doing. And um, she said, just do what you normally do as a witch, and we'll take care of the rest. So I did a little little candle or whatever and like within the next morning I was like I was so sick and then the next morning I was totally fine like it was not even a big deal so that's just an example of how they can be really helpful and then sure enough I asked afterwards what can I do for you how can I help and they said they wanted some custom painted furniture so I painted um a little um wardrobe for Dee Dee and I painted her colors and I painted flowers on it and then the next one I painted um, for Morgan was a little dresser with her colors as well and they loved it they were very happy with them um, but that's just an example of how you can work with them in a day-to-day -day life and how they can be very helpful um, once again the gnome uh, that still lives with me um, hope or whatever uh, I still need to talk to him more that's my problem is I they are kind of a lot of work so I just haven't had the time to actually like sit down and discuss things with them. But uh, he is a very, he's a cutie. He's actually dressed in like little patches of brown leaves. You can tell he's like knit together or sewn together this little outfit. And he's got one of the little hats. And not all gnomes have that beard. He doesn't have that beard because he's a younger gnome. Um, but he's got brown hair and he's got a nice big nose. I could probably find his picture and post it later. Um, and... Uh, he is a sweetheart. He's always kind of kept an eye on things and he's helped me in scenarios. I can definitely tell with the baby. If the baby's really stressed out, all of a sudden he'll just go, ho, ho, and he'll start pointing or looking and it's it's him. He's, he's playing with the baby to make him feel better. So yeah, um, let me see if I can check one more time on these, these, um, these comments because I really do want to see what you guys are saying. Um... I'm just getting rid of, I'm going on my data on my phone to make sure I can actually see what's happening here. Um, but yeah, that's kind of all I had to say in regards to the Fae. I hope it answered some of your questions, and if you have any more, please let me know. What about Fae in urban settings? Yes, um, this is a bit harder, but it is not impossible. I was in the middle of a city. I Mind you, there was a bit of a forest near my place, but like my apartment in the university, but... It is possible to start planting some, if you have some little plants around your house or um, some treats, bring in the natural to you. So some pine cones, you know, set up some things that are reminiscent of their home and they will appear. Um, yeah, it's still not popping up. That's so frustrating. Sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, um, do I have recommended? Yes, for autistic people. Did you know there's a theory that autistic people are actually fey because they don't because essentially autism I'm autistic too um they believe that we have we do not have the capability to, to understand um triggers and to understand um what's the word I'm looking for <sighs> cues social cues we don't understand how those work and the theory surrounding that is we have fey blood because we live by our own culture we live by our own societal cues and therefore we don't understand humans as well that's the theory that there's fey blood oh and when someone says they have fey blood it is not about genealogy like um in fey blood for example uh or sorry if you're taking an ancestry test it says like okay i'm 70 percent german or i'm 70 percent indonesian whatever that's not the way it works with fey blood once you have fey blood in your blood, it's always there. There's no percentile. There's nothing like that. If I'm fey blood, my child's fey blood. That's just the way it is. Um, but yeah, um, I think that's all the questions that I can see anyways. But once again, I'm more than happy to answer any questions you may have privately. Um, I don't know why they're not coming up on my iPad at all. I'm just going to double check one more time. But I'm so, I'm so happy to help and um, I just want to encourage you guys, don't be afraid of working with them. There's so much to, to learn and they are willing to, like I said, they're willing to work with you so long as you're willing to understand them. Oh, and I'll tell you too, um, one time I did say thank you to Morgan. And she messed up my house a little bit. She broke some of my plants and she threw my keys out of the way. But then as soon as I went to her and I said, look, 
I apologize. I know that's not the way I was supposed to act and I recognize that now and I'm trying to make it up to you. She literally, the first thing she started doing was just laughing. She's like, ha 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 She's like, I know. She's like, don't worry about it. I was just messing with you. Like, she just got it. Not all Faye are that understanding, just to be clear. Morgan was quite the specific Faye. But, um, they're willing to work with you. They understand that you're human. As long as you're showing them that you are learning and trying to learn, they are going to be willing. So, but yeah, don't worry about where you're living in particular. They, um, they will, if they sense that there is safety and security and provisions for them, they will come. Okay. Um, because that's the natural pattern of things. They work with us, which is, they do. They work with the sons of God. That's how it works. Thank you.